This is uh, Scott Becker with the Becker's Healthcare Podcast. i uh, thrilled today to be joined by Jonathan Kurtwright. Jonathan's a great leader of the University of Missouri Healthcare System, uh, I believe academic medical center and, and brilliant place. Jonathan, can you take a moment, introduce yourself and, and tell us about the University of Missouri Healthcare System? Sure. Thanks so much for having me on. And uh, Scott, we're, we're grateful. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, so, University of Missouri Healthcare, uh, we are a uh, academic health system, r- rural setting, uh, based in College Town, USA, here in Columbia, Missouri, uh, right where the University of Missouri is, uh, the SEC school. Uh, we are about a $1.3 billion healthcare system. Uh, if you include our affiliate hospital and the School of Medicine, that jumps us up to about $1.8 billion in total uh, revenues. Uh, we, uh, I think, are safe to say we have a, a great relationship with the School of Medicine and our faculty of all the places I've ever worked. This is the uh, best relationship I've ever been a part of between the health system and our physician leadership in the School of Medicine. So that's definitely one of the things I think that is is one of our the secrets of our success that, that we've had. Uh, we uh, are uh, historically have just been, a, I think, a very solid clinical organization and provide outstanding education for uh, medical students and, and nurses and the like. Uh, historically, we've had some uh, we, we have had some room to grow in our research mission, but we just uh, opened up the Next Gen Roy Blunt Next Gen Precision Health Building, and so we've got great progress in, in our research mission as well. And uh, so it, we're, we're doing well, but it is like everybody, uh, we are uh, struggling with staffing and how to manage this public health crisis with COVID. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's been a good chance to lead and to, to, to lead uh, and really make a difference in the overall health of our community. So thanks for asking. So th- thank you. And, and t- talk about, you mentioned rural health care and, and talk about it seems like throughout the country, shortages, both short and long term, of physicians, specialists in primary care, nurses, allied health professionals, and those shortages seem more acute in the rural parts of our country. What do you see there and how do you fight that? How do you sort of, you know, fight against that tide of doctors, nurses being less doctors coming back to rural areas uh, and just not as big a population centers and thus harder and harder to staff systems and so forth. And obviously University of Missouri is itself a flagship place and you've got the college town. And so it's probably, I has to guess it's a little bit more easier, not easy, but easier at the, the main flagship, but in the rural areas, how hard is it to staff and how do, well, how do you sort of fight that? Well, uh, it, it is a challenge when we're recruiting a physician and, and their spouse, uh, say, from the West Coast or the East Coast, they, they will go, gosh, why, why would I want to move from Los Angeles to the middle of the Midwest and uh, uh, seemingly a small place? But one thing we've tried to do of late, it, it, and not everything that's been that come out of COVID has been horrible. Some people have recognized that Living in a smaller community, a little bit more livable community with a smaller commute uh, is not necessarily all bad. Uh, and so uh, we, uh, it's, it, it's interesting, we are, we've been able to have some better luck recruiting people from larger cities that historically we wouldn't have been able to do. So not, not everything has been horrible about COVID. Uh, but I will say that uh, We've had to be, and this is a true for the last uh, dec- few decades, is that in the University of Missouri and the School of Medicine, we have really made massive investments in primary care. Our Department of Family Medicine has been ranked in the top 25, uh, I think, for like 25 years in a row. And so primary care uh, is absolutely one of our core competencies, accessibility, and providing that care. Uh, in a very purposeful way, uh, both in Columbia, but in the rural communities surrounding uh, Columbia, we have a very much of a of a very precise model uh, for uh, primary care and ensuring that that we have good solid accessibility. 
And, and so because of that, they, I think a, phys, a lot of physicians get excited about the idea of being a part of, of, a, of an outstanding um, primary care uh, area in, in family medicine in particular, but they also like the idea of working in a smaller rural community as well. And so the, 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 the goals of having both an academic home as well as an outstanding clinical practice, I think, is appealing to, to many. Now, relative oh. to nursing, ner- nursing is, is always a challenge and one we, we have to always work through. And we haven't met a model yet. We're not willing to try to get more nurses in our, in our uh, locale. There are so many things that you just said in a short period of time that are so fascinating. The first thing is on primary care and making it a core strength, and not just about the fact about primary care, but it's knowing as a system, knowing as a leader in this changing world, what do you have to be great at and and understanding what your core strengths are and where you have to be great. So, so important, isn't it? And when, when you think about a health system, rural, semi-rural, and, and I want to come back to recruiting from the coast in a second as well, because uh, yeah, we'll talk about that too. But this issue of knowing where you have to be great and knowing your strategy, when you think about what does University of Missouri Healthcare have to be great at, what are the things that come to mind? What are the things you talk about and think about? You've mentioned hey, we have absolute strength in primary care. Where else do you have to be just great? Uh, well, if, if you were to see some of our key strategies right now, um, and I'm going to talk about the healthcare system for just a second, if that's okay, uh, it, is, uh, it is we have to be good at scale, and we have to be good at being incredibly efficient. So going back to COVID for a second, and not everything has been bad about COVID. COVID has given us some... Um, political and uh, operational cover to make some incredibly hard decisions. So what do we have to be good at? We have to be good at scale. So one of the things we've done here in Columbia is that we had a children's hospital that was three miles away from the main uh, campus, if you will, in the main part of, of our of our clinical operations. Well, those three miles might have well have been 300 miles. Uh, we, we have had, because of that, we had uh, of the 700 uh, positions that worked at uh, 700 FCEs and employees that worked at Children's Hospital, Windsor Children's Hospital here, uh, at least 200 of them were pure unadulterated duplication. And so our strategy has been, we must be efficient. Uh, we've got to ensure that we have consolidated and shared services wherever possible. So to that end, uh, our university leadership and our, our board uh, uh, doubled down, and I applaud them for this, that in the most uh, critical financial crises, this side of the, of the Great Depression, they made a $230 million investment, which is the largest capital uh, uh, project in the entire history of the University of Missouri. They made that, that bet. Uh, right in the middle of COVID. So getting back to strategy, we have to be efficient. We have to share resources. We have to have scale uh, to make it so that we can, can grow and have resources to invest in, in our clinical programs as well as, as our research and education mission. So that's one of our big, big strategies that's come uh, out of COVID uh, in probably in the last two or three years. Fascinating. Talk about you know, in, in rural areas, so many great rural health systems are working hard to get people to return to the rural community to, to work that way. And then they find this contrast and, and, you know, getting people to come from the West Coast, the East Coast, or to just move away from major metropolitan cities. College towns have a, do, do a little bit better than other places do, but, but very challenging to get to recruit people in the old days recruited lots of doctors from overseas, recruited people that were coming out of the military, and a lot of those sort of pathways that naturally led to rural health care are no longer as easily available as they were at one time. And, and so any more thoughts on how you deal with workforce issues and so forth? I found your comment on the coast to be so true. We find it. I'm a University of Illinois graduate, which is a rival, particularly in basketball at the University of Missouri. <laughs> but, but we find yeah. all these people from the coast want to go to Michigan and Wisconsin 
uh, and it's it's helped the prestige of Michigan, Wisconsin, because it's easy airports to get to. It's easy. It's easy travel, and it's helped them in a lot of different ways. Where University of Illinois does not have that. We're three hours from Chicago. You got to drive down. No parent wants to do that from the west or east coast. But it's it, and it's a small microcosm of the challenges of recruiting to a rural area. Uh, how do you sort of continue to strengthen? Do you develop your own nursing school as well to go with the med school? Do you try and get a lot of people from the med school to stay home in Missouri when when they do applications to the med school? Do you know, like Rutgers favors kids from New Jersey because they want people to stay in New Jersey. How do, how do you work through some of those issues to develop pipelines from the long run around doctors and nurses? Sure. Well, a, a couple of things. I, I think that our our School of Medicine does a great job of ensuring that uh, Missouri young men and women uh, are given the first chance uh, at a lot of our uh, spots and we do a great job in our school of medicine and you know that's a that's a wonderful thing because it, it's a pipeline right it's the med school tends to lead to many many residents and fellows uh, and and then oftentimes we you are able to recruit some of your best and brightest right from your own training programs so uh, you know, I think that having a tra- some training programs, and especially in residency and, and fellowships, that leads very naturally uh, to more and more people that know the strengths and weaknesses of an organization uh, and, and can get excited about what it's like to live uh, in, in a college town like Iowa City or Columbia uh, or Gainesville, Florida, uh, and, and some of these places that may not be uh, as big of of metropolitan areas, but they lead to an incredibly satisfying uh, career uh, and incredibly satisfying uh, uh, personal life uh, for families. And and I think that that is is a major uh, point of differentiation that we will have over places that might have to be on a train for an hour or two one way uh, to get into a city. No, a hundred percent. And talk for a moment about what when you look at big trends and issues, Jonathan, in in the in what you do and what University of Missouri Healthcare does. What are the big trends and issues that you're following on a daily basis? I mean, COVID, of course, still. But what are the big trends and issues that you follow as you look at the next ten years for the health system, for example? How do, what are yeah. they? You know, more and more and more. And boy, this is going to sound so boring, but I think it's true. I think that the the organizations that double down on quality, safety, service, and efficiency, and they build a a better integrated system with physicians and hospitals and clinics and post-acute care, and they can do it at the highest quality rate, demonstrable quality and safety, at the lowest possible cost, are going to be uh, desired by the best payers, and it's going to make it so that you can grow and thrive uh, moving forward. So we work diligently. Uh, we've said we are going to be a Vizient top quartile uh, uh, quality and uh, quality accountability study rankings every single year. Uh, and we have built systems to ensure that we are measuring performance every one of the key subspecialties to do that. And that's become our true north. And by, by, by getting alignment around what that true north is on the busy and rankings, uh, we've been able to be ranked uh, 23rd out of 101 and then 18th in the most recent per- performance. So it's the best two-year performance we've ever had. Uh, but I, I, I think that it is, it, it's so boring, but so critical that we are really focused on the, the basic blocking and tackling that you have to have to be a high functioning uh, academic health system. So that's that's but one of our is, key, but, key but, things we're working on. But, but this is so important. As all these different evolutions of competition happen, many of them without the depth of care that differentiates a place like University of Missouri from them, it is so important that you double down on that depth and strength that you have and, and do care magnificently well, isn't it? I mean, it's just so important, isn't it? It, it, it is. I mean, I, I, my professional life that I started with was, was, at, was at the Mayo Clinic in, in Rochester, Minnesota. So I spent 12 long winters at, in, in Rochester. 
And I think that the Mayo brothers from a hundred years ago, the, the, the thing that they gave to, to uh, healthcare uh, and medicine overall, uh, it, certainly they were incredible surgeons. There's no doubt about that for the time. But the thing that has stood the test of time is the integrated group practice of medicine. And so I, I think that the systems of care at the Mayo Clinic are some of the best. They're, they're, uh, and, and because of that, I, those roots that I have, I think that you, if you focus on basic quality, safety, service, patient service, and efficiency, your financial performance, and ensuring you have a sustainable model, uh, it's going to be awesome. And be, so because of that, that's what led to our work uh, to uh, build a new children's hospital and to, and to share resources and, and to provide better care and more accessible care at a lower cost. And so that quality, safety, service, and efficiency mantra is something that we uh, believe in and we focus on uh, daily. Fantastic. Quality, safety, doubling down on the core. I mean, that's really the only true moat that health systems have is they can be better at these things than anybody else. I mean, it really is so, so important. What else do you look at? What are the trends and issues or big priorities do you look at for this coming year? It's really a challenge right now with our staffing. And, and you're going to hear that from every CEO you talk to. Uh, uh, but right now, uh, the great resignation is real. Uh, the number of people that are leaving uh, uh, the healthcare in general is, it makes me, it's very sad in many regards. So this is a, a major uh, a national phenomenon that's happening. And so in light of that, I, I don't see uh, nursing, nursing shortages going away. It's not like, well, if we get out of COVID, then the nursing shortage, we go, oh, I don't think that's true. Uh, I think that, I think that we're going to have to create new nursing models, uh, uh, and, and ensure that we have them, have our existing nurses working at the highest level of their licensure and coming up with new ways that nurses can take care of more patients uh, with, with, uh, more, uh, uh, non-licensed personnel helping them do their work. So that is a, a trend uh, that we're, we're working on. We're every single day, we're trying to come up with ways uh, that we can better partner and better optimize our existing nursing staff. You know, getting get back to a strategy and a, and a, and a, and a, a, a trend that we're seeing here as well is around innovation. And, and, it, so one of the things that we do and we've really made massive investments in is, is, is critical partnerships. And, and one of the, you know, we, we have a good Missouri company uh, here in our state of Cerner uh, and the Cerner relationship. We uh, have uh, worked very closely with Cerner for almost 12 years now. And, and so we have a good corporate partnership with them. I think that all of our IT is outsourced to Cerner. And so, one of the trends that we focus on is, is, is how can we be the best possible partner uh, uh, for uh, 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 other key partnerships? So in light of that, uh, when Siemens Health and Ears, for example, they heard about our partnership with Cerner and they said, that's the exact sort of partnership that we want for our services and imaging and lab and mammography and now with their, their linear accelerator with Varian. And so corporate partnerships are, are a critical part uh, of what we do. Because once again, we're not the biggest academic medical center of the United States. So we have got to partner for areas where we may not have all of the strengths, but we know that we can uh, reach out and, in an outsourced kind of partnership sort of way and add value to those larger companies to, to be a, a a testing ground and and a site where we, they can try out some of their new ideas uh, moving forward. So I think that that's another trend and another competency that we work on is how can we be the best possible partner for Cerner, Siemens Health and Ears, uh, and Medtronic. Those are three solid examples. Fantastic. Jonathan, it's amazing what leadership you bring to University of Missouri Health Care. I appreciate so much the, the frank discussion, the clarity, and how important it is just to be great as a health system, uh, and and the, and, the, and the clarity you have as to what you have to be great at. Uh, Jonathan Kurtwright, CEO of University of Missouri Healthcare, uh, thank you so much for joining us today on the Becker's Healthcare Podcast.
My pleasure. And uh, Beckers is such a critical part of communication. And thank you for thinking of us. We're grateful.